Good morning, folks. The Real Captain Kirk here live from Weather Trends 360 Studio here in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. It is the 16th of March, Monday morning, 2020. Um, thought today, hopefully, we can be a voice of calm and reason and some hope because um, obviously everywhere you look, we're gripped by fear, whether it's your 401k or family and friends. Uh, again, it was interesting that we saw one of our clients uh, take some of our long-range forecast data and uh, put it into a research tech note saying that uh, when the temperatures hit 77 degrees, uh, maybe we're home free here relative to this current virus. We'll talk about why we think uh, spring does typically uh, reduce the threat of this virus. Uh, if we can go back and look at history here as our guide, that uh, warm, humid, and sun tends to be the, the death sentence for some of these viruses. 1918, again, the Spanish flu kills uh, hundreds of thousands. Again, peaked in the fall, winter months, and then collapsed as we went into the spring season. 2003 with SARS, uh, again, similar trends to this current virus. It actually uh, started to spike a little bit late into the winter, January. Peaked in March and April, and then it collapsed in late April into May as the temperatures got warmer. And then 2020 is just our flu seasons over the last decade here. And again, had that big one back of the swine flu that peaked in October and then crashed through the beginning of winter. Uh, and then obviously this year has been a pretty bad year, again, like 17, 18, in terms of type A, type B flu. Uh, it's just important to note that this virus is not the Black Plague. Uh, when 375 to 475 million people died, about 25% of the world population. But if you listen to the media, uh, that's kind of what you think is happening out there right now. So it's a little sad. Um, just common sense and research tells you uh, what's probably going to happen here. This was an interesting research paper I uh, just stumbled on here over the weekend. Um, again, talks about the, the Spanish flu back in the early part of the century where 20 to 75 million people died. Um, 675,000 died in the U.S. alone. Uh, it was the end of World War I. Troops were getting sick. They were coming home. We were in close proximity. It was in the wintertime, and obviously we had a pandemic outbreak. But what they found out of this research study was that uh, outdoor natural disinfectant is the sun, high in vitamin D. So when they put these patients out there out in the sun in warmer weather, um, it inactivates the flu virus. We know that from other research. Uh, even at nighttime, the fresh air also helped. And so they actually found that the death rate decreased by 30% by having folks outside instead of an overcrowded, germ-infested hospital. So uh, self-quarantine, if you can stay in your home, is a much safer place probably than a hospital even in here in 2020. Uh, so again, low vitamin D levels is one reason why we tend to get these respiratory infections and flu and colds uh, during the winter months as opposed to, say, the summer months. Um, so again, most people really don't die from the flu. Obviously, we die from uh, complications uh, like pneumonia, and that's the same case with this virus. Uh, this was actually a study done by Harvard, but it was interesting that pig and rats uh, show temperatures that above 41 degrees with high humidity uh, resulted in 50% less flu transmissions. And once we got above 68 degrees with high humidity, we had 100% less transmission, meaning no flu was transmitted. So this just suggested uh, with, again, pigs and rats and humans that as the temperatures get warmer, A, the virus does not last on a surface, a cold door handle, a, a gas station pump, your uh, grocery cart. In the wintertime, that flu virus can last on there for two days. Um, in the summertime, for seconds or minutes. Um, so the ability of just uh, to transmit it during spring weather is just much more difficult. Um, even recent research out of Hong Kong has shown that this virus, uh, current virus, is actually dying, a uh, hard time surviving above 50. But again, you're not going to hear that on the mainstream media. So again, uh, let's just see that uh, if history is indeed a guide, uh, what we might expect here with this, uh, this current virus outbreak. This week, weather-wise, again, thank goodness it's on the warm side, uh, 16 through 22 March here is 4.2 degrees warmer than last year, ninth warmest in 35 years, above average national temperatures. Cold spots are obviously in the west and the northern plains. What is in 17 years, second what is in 35 years, with much above average precip. And then uh, snowfall actually way up, 290%, uh, 99% more than a year ago. It's still only near average. We have one system moving through the, the Rockies and the plains here this week, uh, Thursday. Here's that system moving through the Rockies into the Upper Plains. It gets a little more intense as we get into Friday with a decent swath of 48 inches from the Dakotas into the Upper Midwest, into the Upper Great Lakes. If we look at next week, the last week of March here, 23 to 29th, uh, 4.6 degrees warmer than last year, fifth warmest in 35 years with much above average national temperatures, wettest in 11 years, third wettest in 35 years, and again, potentially more severe weather outbreak in the Tennessee and Ohio Valleys. Uh, snowfall similar to last year, but that's still 13th least in 35 years, so much below average uh, national snowfall. Um, this was actually kind of an interesting uh, animation here out of Key West over the weekend. Uh, again, this is actually birds. Uh, the orange is the blue. Uh, radars typically pick up rainfall and thunderstorms, but this is actually showing a migration of birds. Uh, so the yellow and orange uh, coming off of Cuba, going north through Key West and heading in the United States. So apparently these birds aren't afraid of our virus, and uh, they're heading north. 
thought we would talk about what is different than just even back to 2003 when we had SARS. Again, it's kind of media sensationalism. We didn't have Facebook in 2003. That was 04. YouTube, 05. Twitter in 2006. Instagram in 2010. So what we have today is the ability to spread fear and panic really at warp speed. It's second by second constant updates from every governor on earth. Uh, it's kind of a little bit lunacy when you think about it that, uh, again, just a little bit too much hype. You're going to die from the fear rather than the panic and the stress uh, than the actual virus. Uh, this is, I think, a John Hopkins uh, website here. Again, it looks like a, a nuclear bomb site here with the map. Uh, it looks pretty scary, but it's informative, and we ought to dive into the numbers here. Total confirmed cases here, as of, I think, yesterday was 169,000 worldwide. That is 0.002% of the world population with a confirmed case. The deaths are, sadly, 6,513. That's 0.00008% of the world population. This is absolute lunacy, the level of panic that has been created here with this virus. It's not to say that it's not serious, like any flu virus and the complications for the elderly, uh, the young. Uh, but again, if you watch this, you're probably going to have more... Uh, you know, illness because of the stress that this has created. Um, so again, I'd like to end here with some things and some words of hope. And uh, again, we can go back just even 55 years ago. It's hard to believe it's been that long ago, but uh, this quote here, historians will probably call our era the age of anxiety. Anxiety is a crippling disease and a natural result when our hopes are centered in anything short of God and his will for us. This was Billy Graham back in 1965, 55 years ago. And he's got one thing very right here. That it's a crippling disease that uh, ultimately this anxiety has on us here today. Um, I actually like uh, Jeremiah 29, 11 through 13. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for you to prosper and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Then you will call on me and come to pray with me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. Um, and then just lastly here, because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him, I will protect him, for I acknowledge my name, uh, Psalms 91. So these are just some interesting passages, and I uh, hope you would uh, take a look at these again, and uh, hope over fear and pray over fear. Uh, so again, with that, folks, I hope you have a uh, not-so-fearful week, and uh, we will be back here this time next week and uh, probably have some updates on our social media sites uh, here, obviously, as we go through the week. So again, have a great week.